So um, welcome. Hi, everyone uh, joining us from the US, Israel, Palestine, other places in the world. Uh, welcome to the latest in Partners for Progressive Israel's webinar series. My name is Ron Skolnick. Uh, I organize these webinars on behalf of Partners for Progressive Israel. Um, before I hand it over to today's discussion moderator, let me note that Partners for Progressive Israel is an American not-for-profit dedicated to the achievement of a durable and just peace between Israel and its neighbors, which includes an end to Israel's occupation. Uh, Partners supports Israelis working to ensure social justice, civil rights, Jewish Arab partnership, and equality for all of Israel's inhabitants. Uh, the organization seeks to deepen Americans' understanding of the complexities of Israel and Palestine so that they can better advocate for a progressive future for all the inhabitants of the region. Uh, Partners is glad to be bringing this webinar to you for free. If you enjoy it, uh, want more programming like it, please visit progressiveisrael.org and make a contribution to the best of your abilities. Um, I'm just going to make a note about um, chat and the Q&A. Both are open. Uh, the chat is for conversation amongst you, the audience. Uh, questions that you wish, though, to put uh, to our panel should be put in the Q&A. The chat is not going to be monitored for questions, so um, please uh, make sure to make that distinction, and we'll probably repeat that um, during the panel. Um, now I'm delighted uh, to give you a brief introduction of, of who our panel is today. Uh, I'm really, really glad uh, that they've all made the time to be with us. So um, first, uh, Professor Faisal Azaiza is the president of Sakhnin Academic College for Teacher Education. He previously served as Dean of Faculty for Social Welfare and Health Sciences at the University of Haifa, where he headed the School of Social Work. Uh, before that, he has served as the mayor of his home, hometown, Dabouria, in Northern Israel. He's been head of the directorate for the Arab Israel Bank uh, and head of the Jewish Arab Center at the University of Haifa. And he recently co-founded and now co-chairs the new All Its Citizens Party, which we'll be learning about today. Uh, throughout his professional and academic life, Professor Azaiza has dedicated himself to the health and welfare concerns of the Arab community in Israel, uh, seeking solutions to the challenges they face. And his work and research also focuses on Jewish-Arab relations in Israel, uh, especially in the educational contexts. Uh, Professor Azaiza received his MSW and PhD from the Bearwood School of Social Work and the School of Public Health at Hebrew University of Jerusalem and a postdoctorate at the London School of Economics. Um, Avrum Borg is a lecturer at the University of Notre Dame at Tantur, uh, and he is also a co-founder and co-chair of the All Its Citizens Party. A thinker, writer, and peace activist, Borg began his political career in the movement against the Lebanon War in the 1980s. He continued on to have a long political career, and that included position, positions such as member of Knesset of the Labor Party, speaker of the Knesset, and chairman of the Jewish Agency. Uh, he's authored several books, among them God is Back and The Holocaust is Over, We Must Rise from Its Ashes. He publishes articles in major newspapers around the world. He serves as a faculty member. Uh, at NYU Abu Dhabi and the Diplomatic Academy of Vienna, and also is a senior fellow and advisor for the think tank Mulad, the Center for the Renewal of Israeli Democracy. Last but not least, Dr. Anwar Mahajne is assistant professor at Stonehill College, uh, a political scientist specializing in international relations and comparative politics with a focus on gender, religion, and Middle Eastern politics. Uh, her work has been featured in a long list of publications, and I'll just give you a partial list. The International Feminist Journal of Politics, Political Research Quarterly, Religion and Politics, Foreign Policy, the Times of Israel, Haaretz, Middle East High, 972, the Jerusalem Post, the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace, uh, and more. Um, the list goes on, and you can find it at the Facebook event if you want to see this whole list. Um, let me hand things over now to Dr. Mahajna. I thank you all for joining us. I thank our panelists. I'll be back at the end to wrap things up. I hope it's an informative session. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ron, for this uh, great introduction. Um, I'm really happy to have been invited to moderate this panel, this session. 
Um, I don't want to talk too much because I know we have a lot to cover today. Uh, but thank you, Faisal, if I may, and Avram for um, you know coming to talk to us about this important initiative. So I was thinking we could start um, with maybe you telling us a little bit about the party, the structure. Why did you find? Why did you think it's important to found the party, and then we'll move on from there. Okay, thank you, thank you, Professor Anwar. Uh, uh, good evening for everybody. I'm going to share with you a short presentation about Kol Israqiya, Kul Muatimiya, all its citizens. Israel Declaration of the Independence, uh, the State of Israel will ensure complete equality of all of its citizens, regardless of religion, race, or gender. We don't see the presentation. Oh, you don't see it? I don't you think need so. To share it again. Just Do a share minute. screen. Okay. Okay. Sorry for the interruption. Okay. Now you see it. No. Um... Just a minute. I just skip it. Give it as a as an oral tradition. Okay. Not, okay. Uh, as a re okay. not as a scripture. <laughs> and also, if you want, like you can talk and maybe drop it to me in the chat, and I can try to show it as you talk. If that's another. Okay. Option. Let's let's talk it, uh, about it. Um, about uh, it's it's okay for me. The state of Israel will ensure complete equality of all its uh, citizens, regardless of religion, race, or gender. What is Israel? a multicultural, multi-ethnic, bio-national, and multi-tribal society. More than 20% non-Jewish citizens of Israel, Palestinian, Arab, Muslim, Christian, and Druzes. There is no law that guarantees full equality for all Israelis citizens. This is something important. The reality, Jewish Arab rift until now, Jews vote for Jews, Arab vote for uh, Arabs, Arab parties, member in the Knesset are rarely even considered as a potential coalition partners. The authentic Jewish lift represented only by merits did not meet the minimum number of votes required and disappeared from the Knesset in the last election. Civil society, human rights organization, example, the New Israel Fund, Peace Now, Ir Amim, have been officially marked as enemies of the state by current member of the Knesset. Liberal pro-peace anti-occupation parties have no says in the current government. bennett Lapid coalition held as historic inclusion of Arab parties Yet even to this day, the majority of the Israeli society view and speak negative, negatively. We talk about the Israel as both Jewish and democratic. The question if it's we can make the balance between the democratic and the Jewish. Two state solution, if you go through all the West Bank, you see settlement over all the areas. If Palestinian state is created the West Bank and Gaza, Israel indefinitely maintain a majority of at least 70% Jews. If not, Jews represent less than 50% if Israel continue to control all of the land between the river and the sea. This is why 
uh, uh, think about to give hope for our children, for our grandchildren, for our, for the society, for both sides, and we uh, uh, initiate our party. Our aim is to consolidate Israel as a society for all its citizens, to serve as a bridge between Jews and Palestinians. Our principle, peace, I'm compromising commitment to end the occupation to sustainable peace and for a just political agreement agreed upon by the two communities. Law, commitment, to create a civil and democratic constitution with the equal rights for all without one group superior to another group. Justice and equality, we commit to provide public resources fairly and to promote an economy that reduce the gap and cares for every person and their environmental equality. From the Jordan River, to the sea is the national homeland for the Palestinian Arabs and for the Jewish people. We have deep respect for both national identities. The religion and the state completely secular public sphere and separation of religion and state with the full respect for a private and community religious expression. Partnership to commitment to create partnership that uphold democracy and our value within Israel and globally. If I summarize our principle to end the occupation, to conclude the political resolution between Israel and Palestine based on the principle of equal rights, to acknowledge that historical national trauma of the other based on empathy, sensitivity, and mutual respect to achieve reconciliation. This is something that we want to work for it. To heal and correct injustice of the past to extend possible without creating new ones. To draft civil constitution and laws based on democracy and social justice. To make public sphere secular and enable diversity, religious freedom and mutual respect for the holy places. We are, we want, and we hope to make history different. Over the year, there have been Jewish parties that involve Arabs and the Arab party that involve Jews. But there has never been a party equally led by Jews and Arabs together for Israel and all its citizens. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Faisal. Um, I know Avram, you said that we can go with the questions and then you add your uh, pits as we go with the questions. This is fascinating. And I was reading um, more about the party. I kind of looked up statements that you both made about the party. Uh, for me, this sounds fascinating on paper, right? So now the question comes to us of well, how does it look like practically, right? And what does it mean also in terms of how are you going to reach to voters and people? So first, my first like part of the question, a more specific part, okay, let's say you have a group that does embrace Zionism and they view this party as anti-Zionist, right? And that will prevent certain voters from voting for that party. So how do you explain or try to reach out to these people or these voters or try to incentivize them um, and convince them that this is the best approach? Let's begin with your working assumption. Is it Zionist? Is it non-Zionist? Is it anti-Zionist? It, it's beautiful to hear your old, uh, your old syntax and your old vocabulary. We're not in this talk. We invent a new language. And what is okay. that language? I'm going to tell you word by word. I mean, from A to Z. Uh, a new language in the sense that all the parties in Israel, as Faisal so eloquently said, are organized around the national and ethnical and cultural uh, organizer, Arab, Jewish. There is a Jewish one with an Arab fig leaf. There is an Arab one with a Jewish fig leaf. 
but none of them is really based around the very fundamental basic democratic notion that a state, any political state, belongs to all of its citizens. Israel is the only place in the world in which struggling for the normal is very not normal. So we struggle for the new Israeli normal to say, listen, here is a democracy that does not belong to diaspora Jews, does not belong to God, does not belong to I don't know whom, it belongs to all of its citizens. You can be a Jew, you can be a Muslim, you can be a Zionist, you can be a religious, you can be secular, you can be a Baha'i, you could be a uh, fruitarian. All is good, all is good. But at the public political sphere, we are all equal. So we are a kind of federation of identities that as long as your identity does not preach for the nihilation of my identity. Do not promote violence as a mean of resolving social and civic disagreement. We can work together as long as our working assumption, we are all equal. Now imagine, you were born here, Faisal was born here, I was born here. Okay, here I'm in at this side of the pond. I come to an average American Jew and I say, tell me, what are you? And he or she will tell me, well, I'm Democrat, and I say, what is Democrat? They will say, it's about uh, constitutional separation between church and state. It's about equality, constitutional equality of all the citizens. It's about fairness in the distribution of public resources. I say, wow, that's beautiful. Is that what does that mean to be, let's say, an American Jew, an American Democrat? 90% of the people will say yes. Take these positions, basic democratic values, copy paste them to Israel and all of the sudden you are traitor, you are Trojan horses, you step the back of the nation, you're no Goodnik or you're Avram Boog. So the whole thing is to take basic normal democratic values, offer them to all and by that reorganizing or actually resetting the entire Israeli operating system from nationalistic, tribal and very almost very religious in definition into something which is equal, secular, and belongs to all. Thank you. Um, can, I can't add, we came really from all corners of Israel and all its various group, women and men, Arab and Jews, young and old from the center and from the periphery, from villages and from cities, academic and public figures, we represent every citizens of Israel. We offer a civil political alliance with everyone who believe like us. And we, of course, want to end the occupation and to make more bridges between the two societies and more dialogue. And maybe one day, I, I hope, to reach the reconciliation between the two people in the internal of Israel and between the Palestinians in the West Bank and of course, Israel. So this, I wanna also clarify a few things as we talk about it. Faisal, I also have a, a specific question for you. Um, so one, when we see all of its citizens, are we talking about, again, I wanna clarify, are we talking about now who currently hold Israeli citizenship? Or are we talking about a situation where we're going to create a one state from the river to the sea that has equal citizenship to everyone? And how would that translate in practicality? So I think that's a big, big question, right? Um, and after we clarify that, Faisal, I want us to talk about the secular aspect or in general, how are we going to reach to an audience that is conservative and not just con religiously conservative, from both sides, like it, it exists in the Jewish community, it exists in the non-Jewish community in Israel. And how can we talk about um, LGBTQI rights, about equal rights for everyone, regardless of their not only nationality, but sexual identity and gender. And I read that in the statement that you have. So how can we also sell that? I, I, it's a bad word to use, but how can we convince voters that that's an important thing beyond the national element of it, right? Palestinian Israelis, and that's it. I understand that, you know, it's uh, our background, all of us and uh, me, Avroom, we grow in, uh, in, in families, all conservative or religious uh, uh, family. 
and the, the atmosphere or the political life in Israel is continue in this sphere. We try to change things. We are establishing a common ideological space that to be citizens, it's mean more than what we have today. And we try, of course, uh, 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 to encourage people uh, that this is the bridges that make us, all of us, Jews, Arab, uh, uh, religious, not religious, as a human being. And let's talk through citizenship and not leave the way of talking. You can be and you can pray in your home to what you want to pray. You can be uh, 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 Muslim, you can be Jewish, you can be ultra-Orthodox, you can be what you want, it's free. But let's make the public sphere that it's a public sphere for everybody and everybody have the same right. It's not, it's not easy, uh, we, we believe it's not easy, but it's a new think that we believe in it. And I think that the majority of the people believe in it. I hope that we will succeed to release, I mean, uh, many people from um, afraid of being equal citizens as a Muslim, as a Jewish, as a Christian, as a Druze. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Avram. Do you have something to add to this question? And also yeah. to the question of you, the you, old... Let, let's begin with the narrow-mindedness, okay? We are a party within Israel. The occupied territories are not Israel. Yes, they are under the dominance, they are under the rule, or under the boot of Israel, but they are not Israel. So first, we fight within Israel, for a different political framing of the political process, which moves from the national to the civic civilian one. Now, if you ask us, what do you want? We want peace. I didn't want to achieve peace. The number one, the number one parameter is put an end to the deprivation of, of the democratic rights of millions of people by the hands of the only half democracy in the Middle East, also known as the state of Israel. Now the question is how you do it. For many years, many of us, me for sure, Faisal as well, we believe that the two-state solution is the solution. Now all of a sudden, when you look thoroughly into the situation, you realize that if and when there will be Palestine, it will not be fully democratic. And if and when there will be this Israel, when the agreement will happen, it is for sure not fully democratic. So people like myself, and I take it people like Faisal as well, though maybe from a different angle a little bit, we stop counting states. We count rights and liberties. And we fundamentally believe that between the Jordan and the Mediterranean, every individual and therefore every collective has the right for the same rights. So the first fight, the first struggle is about the value system of the place. Is it about oppressing the other people? Is it about denying the rights of the other people? Is it about democratic deprivation? Or is it about total acceptance and therefore relinquish some of the absolute privileges and make this space a, a political shared space? Now, what would be the exact nature of the agreement, a state, two states, one state, federation, confederation, less important, Tell me what will be the life of the one in this new political reality. And if the life of the one will be as qualitative as it is today in Boston, Daburia, or in my village in Ataf, it's a good starting point. I, I want to share with you, Professor Anwar, uh, about some successes of the life in the health uh, system in Israel. To give you an example, if you, next time, when you come to visit Israel, we can go together to the Rambam uh, hospital and we ask people who, when they go to surgery, and they don't ask who is going to be the, our doctor. Like Ahmed Asaliya, you know, and I don't know if you know how, how, know, how you, much you know him, he very famous surgery. So we, we get the successes in this, in the, the, the health system. But 
really in the education and in the political life and other spheres, we don't have the same successes. It means that it's a hope that we can change the system. I really hope so. We get to change the system because that's very important. But talking about the healthcare, I know you were talking about success stories, but I kept thinking of Ahmed Mahajni and what happened to him at, uh, I think, Hadassah, right? And yeah. the whole story. That we have sad stories, of course. Of course. <laughs> yeah, I, and my sister works in Hadassah, so that's kind of uh, something that I keep thinking about. Um, but these are, uh, are very important questions. Now, have you done any polling in the community, both in the Palestinian slash Arab community? And I usually use Palestinian slash Arab because we have, you know, diverse group of people that identify differently, as we said, um, versus the Jewish secular and non-secular communities um, on the party and like they're interested in, not interesting, interested in it. I know in the U.S. there is bigger interest in such things, but I'm not sure how it is in Israel. And will you be able to kind of, let's say, pass the, the threshold, right? Uh, the election threshold um, in the next elections. It might come soon, right? Maybe first we have to pass some trashes before we go to the threshold, okay? <laughs> because the environment is quite trashy if there is a word like this in English. Having said that, um, I will tell you A, yes, and B, we, we do not really know. What is the yes? With all the service we've done, the readiness of people to try something new is out there. And this, a lot of it was done, a lot of our service were done before the current political, social, civil society uprise, which reactivated the political attendance and political attention. People listen differently to politics and they understand that the old elephants are old and do not function. Labor Party, Meretz, Hadash, and few others, they do not function, they do not deliver, they're looking for something new. Now mm -hmm. the question is, will we be that something new? It's a very, very interesting question and I just, throw, I mean, I, 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 I put my beam on one thing only. It's complicated. We believe yes, and we, are, we work day and, day and night in order to make it possible. However, and keep it at the back of your mind. I'm a Jew. I'm coming from the privileged 80% majority. Whatever I have to relinquish, it's after almost a century in which I have independence or self-definition. Whatever Faisal has to relinquish and give up is pre-independence, is before having self-definition. So in a way, we relinquish differently. Will we be able to come to a third shared ground, though our departure point is different? Us personally, as friends and as leaders of the party, definitely. The hundreds of people who registered and active in the party, definitely. The millions out there, hundreds of thousands out there are waiting. Now, the younger the Arab generation is, the more you find that the readiness to, uh, to try it, to give it a chance and go for integration. So our hope is new language, new public sphere, and new audiences. Mm -hmm. um, we still, we, we still, just to give, just yesterday, we were in with a group of 30 people. Uh, the majority of them, they are Jewish. Me and Avrum. Uh, uh, and you have people also from the villages around uh, uh, Nahariya. We still, of course, we are doing what we call the groundwork now to prepare for the million that we like to be with us, I mean, in the future. It's not easy, but it's a hope. I think it's give hope because we are in stage, the majority of people, they are going without any hope for the next generation. And of course, this way, it's give a hope for people in the local, I mean, if I talk about in the internal conflict, I mean, citizens of Israel within the green line. And then of course, we, with the second circle with the Palestinian people. 
And we hope the atmosphere today, it's more ready to have like this party. Um, this is this is all fascinating. Um, and for me, you know, I think it, like for me as a voter, a possible voter, for instance, I would like, if I want to talk to somebody about the party from my community, one of the main issues, for instance, that they will think about after they think about like the national element of it, right? Like uh, Jewish Arab partnership is how will you address main concerns? So let's talk about gun violence in the community, which has been a big failure for even Ben Gvir, right? Like he's like claiming that he's gonna stop everything because he's like, I don't know, like- uh, he's it's, the power it, it, did, it did stop everything, but the wrong everything. <laughs> well, that's true. Uh, but it is a very important issue that I think has national element, and also communal element to it, right? And it's at the core of the concern of the community. So how would your party, for instance, if you're creating a plan, how would you envision that you will address that issue? And I think that will help us go beyond the philosophical, theoretical to the application of this. How would it look like? How would you approach that issue? I'll begin with something which is yes, abstract and yes, philosophical, but very emotional. So many years, 70 some years, at every elections, the Jewish segment of the so-called left, though, I think that was never left in Israel, went out to the Arab street and said, come save us our democracy. We are not about this kind of partnership. We go out to both streets and say we are about an, es an essential partnership of total equality. Two languages, 50% Jews, 50% non-Jews, equal gender division between representatives and committees and all. It's a true partnership which aims to or strive towards the collective goodness of both communities. So this is a concept that was never offered by any other one in the, in, in the, the political street or political market. As for the plans themselves, it is simple to the level of simplistic. And I'm sorry to be so shallow, but I was so many years in Israeli politics, so I'm quite equipped or quite trained in this shallowness, okay? We need four members of Knesset to pass the threshold. You have four members of Knesset that no real majority or no real coalition can live without them. Now comes the prime minister, you want a budget? How much you pay me in the currency of equality? You want this bill? How much you pay me in the in the in the in the national strategy in the currency of national strategy to reduce violence? You want my support for A, B, and C? What do I get for my promises? And my promises are existential. My promises are promoting peace, any way we spoke earlier, reducing the violence as a national target at the national mission, improving the standard of living of the impoverished communities, resolving the housing and the building and the land allocation for young couples and suffocated villages, and narrowing the gap to the level in which we total equalize the public allocation, public resource allocation for education, healthcare, and social responsibility. Whomever wants our four seats, has to pay. And these are the currencies, no other currencies. Thank you. And I think I want to ask one more question before we approach the audience's question, because we have a lot and some of them are questions that I want to ask, but I want to give that, I want to read it from the, the, the audience Q&A. So my question is for you. As a party who wants to change the system, you still have to work from within the system to get into the system, right? You're a party thinking about elections. So how will you do that? How will you kind of um, get over or kind of challenge the limitations of the structure, the political structure itself that exists for your participation? So we, uh, me and Avrum, we work in the past <laughs> with the system. I serve as a mayor of my village for, uh, and I know how to work with the system. I work as, you know, uh, 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 in the past, and I establish uh, uh, many uh, 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 NGOs that work with the systems. We know the system. And because we know the system and we can work with it, 
with, with, with just with different strategy that when you have the power and we hope that in the future we at least have the power to be part of the parliament and this power will and we are not working to be outside of any coalition we we want to work hard to lead people when i talk people i talk about jews and arabs citizens of the state doesn't matter what which state you talk about within the green line one state i mean we, we talk about possibilities of leading something different that talk about equal opportunities to any child of the state reduce the gap between people give more uh, resources to uh, uh, the periphery of the israel more the prefer of israel the majority of them they are arab or ultra orthodox jews so we know the system we know how to work with the system but we hope that people will support us to give us a chance to show different politics with hope and to change reality that it's very complicated reality and we are aware of it mm -hmm. Avon, did you want to add anything no um we'll find another opportunity i mean listen as um there are windmills in which we will not declare a war against. Okay, there will be by the end of the road some windmills, but uh, some other windmills. But we have a couple of other missions before we change the entire system. Mm -hmm. And uh, we take it uh, a mission at a time. Thank you. Um, I want to go to the audience Q&A. This is just a reminder to the audience that um, the chat is not for asking the questions, but the Q&A is. Uh, so type your question there. Um, you're more than welcome to have a conversation in the chat as you like uh, really in relation to the conversation. So, um, okay, one question that kept coming back is the right for return, right of return, but not only for Palestinians, but also for Jewish people. How would you address that? I think different people asked it from different directions. So, you know, Aliyah for uh, Jews to Israel and also the return of Palestinians uh, to their historic homes in Palestine. Hi, sir. I can begin the law of return must change because reality has changed in the past decades. Maybe we can, uh, uh, maybe a whom you can talk about the law of return for Jewish people uh, uh, to Israel and I can talk for return of Palestinian people. I mean, this is something that we must have agreed about it in the future. Let me want to talk about. Yeah. At a time in which the the buzzword was two state solution, Oslo and on, the concept was very simple. Here you have two political entities in which, in each and every one of them, most of the political issues of the national community will be resolved within Israel. The issues of the Jewish political community will be resolved. And in Palestine, most of the Palestinian ones and whatever is in between, we shall find kind of formulas, solutions, compromises or whatever. Nowadays, it looks like between the Jordan and the Mediterranean, there will, the, the probabilities for a two state solution are very, very low because the deeds of Israel, because the things we did not do, and because the weakness of the Palestinian Authority and, 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 and the attention of the world and you name it. So now the question is, in a place in which you have, what is the struggle? The struggle today is not between the one state formula and the two states formula. The real struggle is what kind of one state will it be? Will it be one state like today with two regimes, one full of privileges for the Jews, an absolute discrimination to the Palestinians, or will it be a one state with one concept that slowly but surely we equalize the conditions of both communities? 
So this is strategically speaking, me personally, I don't think we have any party position about it. I think we are now much closer to the conceptual of e one state of equality rather than two states of, e and which will never happen. Having said that, comes the question, who might become a citizen of this place? Let's go to the Jewish segment. When the law of return was legislated early on, hundreds of mil millions of Jews were still persecuted, were still refugees, were still traumatized. So there was a need for kind of an immediate uh, transition from exilic to sovereign reality, mm -hmm. from wandering Jew to a citizen. Nowadays, Israel does not belong to the entire Jewish people. No state belongs to stakeholders or not living within its boundaries, pay taxes and responsible for its decisions. Israel belongs to all the Israelis. And therefore the law of return should be narrowed and limited to this very exceptional reality in which an individual Jew is persecuted because his or her Judaism, let's have a fast track one way or another. All the rest of the people, were knocking on the door, like my daughter was knocking on the door of the, of, of, of the state of the United States of America. She had to live there, she had to prove, she had to produce. Then she was a candidate. Now she is in the process of green, of green card. By the end of it, maybe Avital and her children will be American citizens. The same over here. You want to be a citizen of the place? No problem, knock on the door. Israeli, Jew, Palestinian, whomever you are. And if you qualify, because you integrate in the culture, because you contribute to the society, because you know the language and you're not an overnight oligarch who ran away from Putin and all of a sudden became a political influencer in Israel. That's a shallow, corrupt system. So the law of return to be limited to the persecuted individuals, Palestinian included, that might find a shelter or a safe haven over here, all the rest of the people, please stand online, and if you're a good potential future citizen, welcome. Um, then I think I wanna uh, also ask a few, I, I'm gonna combine these two uh, together. Um, there's a question about the flag and national anthem. And then the other question is about who will serve in the IDF. Who serve? In the IDF. That, uh, may I answer this uh, uh, Faisal with your permission? Okay, I, I am I, I'm happy with your answers, Avrum. You always, okay. Jews and Arab and Palestinians, they argue, and we we agreed about what <laughs> you suggest, because you, you take the fairness as a basic in your thoughts. Here is the daughter-in-law comes to her mother-in-law and says, Mom, listen, I was 20 when I married your son. We are married for 20 years. He was 20 years with you and 20 years with me. It's your turn again. And I say, we served in the army for 75 years. Now it's your turn, Palestinians. Okay, we had enough. Now let's see if you can do it better. But beside this, uh, a, li a little smile, um, I, I, will say, I will say as follows. I believe that before we start to talk about who will have the hand on the trigger of the, of the denied bombs, let's see where can we create shared responsibilities that's the interest of both communities. Environment has no flags, has no colors. Infrastructure, nature, sewage system, education and basic health values. System. I'm sorry? Health, the health system, no, welfare I mean, system. We can, share, we can share from bottom up so many things. And then after, we don't need 56 years of correction, not even 75 years of, of remaking the situation. After a decade, a decade and a half of cooperation that so many Jewish Israelis will realize, I give my life to the person, at the, to the mechanics at the garage that when I drive the car he fixed, I risk my life or trust my life with him. I go to the pharmacy, I buy poison from 80% of pharmacists who are from the Arab community and I trust them with my life. When I go to hospitals, the Corona are was an Arab. So if I can trust them, them in all of these places, why not in politics? It will take time. Now, what will be the national 
the national signs, the national, the national symbols, very, very simple. Yesterday, Faisal and myself agreed. The national anthem will be just the music and the national flag will be just the color. And everybody can load on it, whatever everybody wants. Thank you. Um, all right, going on with the questions. There's a, I saw multiple questions about how are you going to guarantee that you're not taking vote, votes away from other parties? Um, so I don't know how we kind of like you're wasting uh, votes. So what do you think about that? Why we have to care about other parties? We must care about our party. So if we believe that we are the right party in the 2025 election that will make the changing of the society in Israel to make it more fairness, more equal opportunities, more the, uh, it's led by Arab and Jews. Why we have to care about other parties? I'm sorry, where, where this question is coming from? Of course we want to loot other parties. <laughs> I mean, nobody is going to nobody is going to increase the Knesset in order to grant us twenty parties to twenty seats for for free. There are parties, and everybody is running, and this is a competition. Make the best one winner, and we run faster, and we hold stronger. I, mean, I think you're referring to like groups like Balad, the Joint List. I mean, no longer exists, but Hadash, like all these groups that are ready. Maybe inside. they will join us as uh, uh, a new thoughts, a new party that. Why do we have to care about them? I'm much, much blunter, I'm sorry. I mean, it's a forum about Israeli politics. I cannot be that soft, okay? Or that, that nice to people. Our <laughs> political aim is to persuade all the voters within the following parties who believe in our values, but never had the platform to support, to join. Former or, or may, may it rest in peace merits, May it soon rest in peace labor, okay? The non-communist, non-dogmatic element of Hadash and those supporters of Balad and Sami Abu Shkade who are not devoted Baladis, but really people who bought the message of Kol Ezrachia, all of yeah. its citizens. This is it. Look at this. <laughs> See it? Here we go, okay? Ah, where is it? Here it is. Mm -hmm. uh, it's our, this is our message. We go about it and we will take every voter for merits from labor, from Hadash, from Balad, who is ready to risk a new, um, a new startup because whomever will come to this new startup at the entry point will profit the entire Israeli society at the exit time. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, moving on to the next questions. Um, so there's a question about how do you hope to convince the Orthodox community to see this uh, new entity um, as Jewish enough? We're not. We're not. We simply go to, to push back. Whomever Orthodox enough in order not to accept democracy as a as a modus operandi of a, of a normal state is not our partner so we'll be opposition and we'll push back we i can say we respect any community of people in israel but our target the ultra orthodox jewish they are not target that we are working they will support us but maybe in the future we can share <laughs> some fight of uh, equal opportunities between, like if we talk about the education system or the health system in, in, in their communities, of course, we can share their uh, uh, needs, but uh, now to talk about mm -hmm. them Faisal as a target. Faisal touches something very, very profound. When we speak all of its citizens and equality for all, yes, the most symbolic, iconic one is the Jewish Arab uh, um, um, imbalance. Mm -hmm. However, there are so many other deprived, excommunicated, alienated, discriminated communities, the Ethiopian, 
some of the orthodox some of the women in the orthodox communities mm -hmm. and 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 our message is universal yes we iconize it through the part the jewish and arab partnership but the meaning is collective goodness for us all and yeah. we believe that once we shall prove that we fight for the right causes people from other communities will either join forces or will mm -hmm. establish the same cells of ideas into the other parties and by this we change the public discourse okay um then there are a couple of questions one of them um is about uh, are you working with omdim biachad uh the movement itself or have you any ties with them working together that in some uh, 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 places we are <laughs> we are sharing uh, uh, things of course but they are not yet want to be a political uh, uh, I mean figure in the political uh, system we have a lot of conversation with them with their leaders mm -hmm. but of course in the future we hope that we can share with them many uh, activity activity that we want to do it to push for more civil, uh, 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 rights in Israel and civil society in Israel. Mm -hmm. And since that question brings us to alliances, there's a question about um, kind of, you know, if you are, let's say, a part of a coalition, um, how would you work with like groups and organizations that are promoting anti equality for women, LGBTQI, and, you know, non religious groups? That's the catch-22 of liberalism. In the identity politics structure, you are a liberal, and therefore you are tolerant enough to allow communities to preserve their own way of life. So it's okay to do it with the Arab community, it's okay to do it with the Orthodox, ultra-Orthodox community, etc. So as a liberal in the identity politics era, you enable groups to preserve their own identity, but within their own communities, they're anti-liberal completely. Mm -hmm. It's an issue. It's a catch-22 that we are not the first one to put our hands on it. I mean, people, uh, Aukin and others wrote about it very, very seriously. Um, and if you are interested, talk to me later. I'll tell you about a conversation in my podcast I had with Michael Krayani exactly about that. I put it like that in our um, in our party, and I put it in the manner of the dilemma we are facing rather than a solution we're having. Okay, we're two communities that are driven by different drivers. For a Jew to be progressive, it means about pro-LGTB, et cetera, which means maybe post-national, post which means totally, uh, to totally equality between men and women and genders, et cetera. In many cases for an Arab in the Israeli society, not all cases, to be progressive means to accept the existence of Israel and to sit together in the same political party, though I want to preserve the tradition of my family. So we have two different dynamics. One dynamic which says equality for all and one dynamic says, I want to cooperate with you about certain equality, but don't change my history. As a party, we do not dictate who will join forces in our struggle to change the public sphere. We are not, and we do not have any intention to walk into the pocket or sleeping room or the womb of any member of the, of the party. Uh, Faisal, do you want to add anything before we go on to the next question? No, you can go, no. So the next question is related to this, um, and it's asking, um, are you, let me make it live. Are you not afraid of Libana, Lebanonizing Israel by pushing for impossible equality, where every part of society and the states become polarized based on religious and ideological spheres? I am not afraid to Lebanonize because we are talking about uh, civil. Uh, I'm not talking about uh, religious. And in, in Lebanon, they talk about more, if you talk about civil society, or you talk about secular uh, uh, society in the sphere of the public, 
So if we talk about uh, the possibilities, equal opportunities between people, uh, and we agree about uh, uh, the system, uh, and we agree about everything, we can uh, uh, discuss it and talk about it in democratic way. Uh, so I'm not afraid because we enough uh, um, believe in democracy and we are uh, try to fight for democracy. So I am not afraid of to Lebanese uh, uh, Israel. Um, Avon, anything to add? No, not yet. Okay. Um, I do have lots of questions about like the engagement of young uh, leaders in your party, with your party, and if you have a list of, let's say, uh, leaders who endorsed your platform, endorsed the party and its mission. Um, so kind of general questions about where you're standing with leaders from all ages, but specifically young leader uh, leaders, and also polling wise, um, where do you see your support is coming from? And have you, like, are there any official polls that you have? We still, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I think, of course, we will have uh, in our party a young leaders, and we still working uh, hard uh, and to and open our uh, uh, doors for more and more young leaders to be part of our uh, party. I, we are talk about Jews and Arab, women and uh, 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 men, and. Uh, of course, we have to work hard for it, and uh, of course, we 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 are uh, open for other people who want to join us. Uh, we are not close our doors for any leaders who want to be part of this party. We have open. We we believe in the ideology that we talk about it, and uh, if people come to be and to serve this. Uh, 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 hope that we are working for it, we are more than happy to have them with us. The question of young and old in, the, in politics of Israel is as old as the politics in Israel, okay? And up until 22 weeks ago, the nature of politics was that the younger generation is working on their career, be it academic, be it business, be it vocational, be whatever it is, and grandpa and grandma going for demonstrations and babysitting the kids. That was the nature of it, and therefore you do not see a lot of renewal in the Israeli political system. You see a lot of it at the right-hand side, especially the youth of the hills are coming and this kind of... Uh, this kind of activist, but it's it's a different sociological trends. What happened in Israel in the last six months almost, which is the public demonstrations, etc., it reactivated the generation that was at the sideline for so many years, a generation that didn't want to get involved in politics, a generation who said it's about myself, who cares about the public, uh, the public good, etc. And all of a sudden, this is a generation who takes over. I see it at home. I see my kids, how much they are involved at the highest level of demonstrations, et cetera, and organizing and coordinating, et cetera. And I've no doubt that out of this generation of the street, we shall see a new layers of a new layers of leadership. Maybe it will not be the kind of leadership that we used to know at the past of the country, kind of charismatic, almost royal uh, Napoleon, uh, Napoleon-like uh, leaders, but it will be a leadership that one of the, th the two things it knows, it's A, the importance of the civil society and its interaction with the political society. And the second is the meaning of cooperation with others who are not exactly like me. It's a different kind of leadership. It's much more of horizontal cooperative one than vertical dictating one. Having said that, having said that, I've no doubt that the kind of idea that we have, and when we check it in polls, the younger you are, especially at the Arab community in Israel, the more enthusiastic you are to join forces. Yes, people are reluctant. Yes, people do not really know what is this new animal. They say, first show me that you succeed and then I'll join. It's much, it's a, it's a bit of a risky business, but since we are so fully persuaded 
in our message and we go from place to place, from door to door, from meeting to meeting, we collect people. When you look at the cohorts of our activists, the people who deal with the platform, the people who deal with the organization, the people who organize messages and workshops, etc., they are all 40 and, 40 and below. Mm -hmm. I am going to combine a, a few questions together and I think, and then after that, I have one final question to kind of uh, help us end the discussion. So the question, um, there were lots of questions about addressing extremists from both sides, but then there was a question also about addressing foreign involvement in what's happening, like, you know, groups from outside of Israel that have investment inside of Israel politically and religiously. And then the question of what are you going to do about Netanyahu? So I combined all of it together because it's kind of relevant. So to begin with what? Um, extremists. Let, I mean, you can start with that. We, 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 we as a party, we are not uh, uh, put ourselves as extremists. I mean, uh, we, we try to to be not in the extremist uh, uh, both sides. I mean, uh, this is something that if we talk about bridges and we talk about uh, equal opportunities and we talk about uh, 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 democracy and we talk about uh, uh, to host um, any idea and to listen for any any person with with a different from you so we, we are we are talking I, i'm not talking about the extremist uh, this is not our target group the extremist from both sides. Uh, uh, Approach to ignore them or is there like- No, 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 not to ignore them. Uh, uh, they, they have their way of life and they work in, in their ways. And uh, of course, uh, the, but if I want to uh, invest my energy now, it's not in the extremist of the both uh, 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 side. Uh, we are working together uh, on the brave effort to create a new reality. It's really, this is our uh, uh, mission in Israel and Palestine, uh, and that uh, bring people together and shared future instead of dividing them. This is, if you talk about extremists from both sides, how you can, uh, they working together? Maybe they uh, they fighting each other, but not not working together. We are looking about the the majority of the silent people from both sides who want to be uh, 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 to have a, a solution for the conflict, to reach the reconciliation uh, uh, from both sides, and to have uh, hope for our children, for our grandchildren. And I don't think that the extremists. Uh, give this hope for them. I um, I, I think a little bit different with your permission, Faisal. Okay, that's okay. If you ask me about Netanyahu, of course I'll be happy to visit him in jail, but I'm not at all <laughs> sure it will happen soon. So uh, let's talk about Netanyahu as a political entity. Okay. I'm totally against the notion that Raklo Bibi, everyone but Netanyahu, because what does that mean? It means that not, not only Netanyahu defines his own camp, he defines his opposition as well. The same is right for the extremists. I don't care what they're doing. I do not want them to define me. I want to define them. I want Ben Grier to stand up and say, everybody but Faisal Azizeh. I want everybody there, and they already began to stand up and say, Medinat Koles Rachea, all of its citizens, oi gewalt. I want them to fight with our ideology so we shall become the definers of the political system. There will always be extremists, and other people will try to portray us as extremists. This is not the point. The point is, what is your message? And whom are you, active or reactive? My, our message is Israel belongs to all of its citizens and we are active and we want to take it onwards to whomever is ready to listen. Our immediate first campaign or campaigns will not be against Ben Gvir. This is given that we are against him, but it will be to change the lingo or the, 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 the syntax of the next to us parties. I mean, it's impossible. It's unheard of that people who believe in our in our 
a, a, a value system deep inside can stand beside Gantz, who opens in his campaign by saying, I killed thousands and some Palestinians. That's a language that we cannot accept. And we want to create a situation in which the Gantzes of the world will not be able to talk like that. So it's a, not about who is an extremist, but how do we define a situation that they cannot express themselves? First, those next to us. And then we should move to the others. First, we take Manhattan. Okay, I want to end us with one last question. I know Juan wants to kind of sum it up, but um, there was a question about how can people help you? Like, how can they help you achieve your goals? I think buy buy t-shirts. <laughs> I, I can say uh, as a, as a last comment uh, that I will share. It up. We have the vision. How you see? We have the vision. Uh, we have the courage, we have the people, and now we just need the resources. We need resources. Without resources, we know we can push ourselves ahead. So we have everything to win. And of course, we, we need resources to support us. Resources are larger than money, okay? Yeah. Resources means those of you who are either Israelis or have an Israeli connection, pass the message and ask whomever is interested to get in touch with us. We like to go, go online or for Palo meetings or whatever to as many places possible. We yeah. believe in the ripple effect. So help us to spread the ripple. Those of you who believe in the cause, but living abroad and not Israeli citizens and ready to open doors for whatever kind of spiritual, political, financial support, get in touch with us and we shall follow through. We shall do our best to come, to be presented, to offer alternatives, to argue, to agree, to disagree, and eventually to persuade. How can people reach you? Because I'm getting questions about like a, a website. Uh, Ron, has the, Ron has the mail and you do not need 25 mails in order to get to get in touch with us. Five will do. And then uh, somebody asked about a link for your podcast, if you can link that uh, in the I'll chat. I'll send it all to Ron and uh, the name is The Cogito. I'll send it to Ron later or tomorrow and he will share it with you. Oh no, I'll put it here at the... Um, I put both both my mail and Faisal will put his mail um, um, here at the chat, so you can copy it and you have it. And I put also my my podcast there, just you know, to have some fun. <laughs> Faisal, put your put your mail at the chat, please. Okay. You see it? At a chat? Good. Yes, I tried. tried. Ron, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Avroom. Thank you, Faisal and Anwar. Uh, thanks for everyone who joined us. I'll just mention also if you go to Facebook and you type in in the search All Its Citizens, you'll come across uh, the party's Facebook uh, page. It's in um, Hebrew and Arabic, I believe, not English, but those of you who, um, who speak Hebrew and Arabic will be able to access its documents and its vision statement uh, as well. Um, I also want to thank uh, Dina Sharma, my colleague, who's been working feverishly behind the scenes to make this discussion happen. Um, we hope you enjoyed today's webinar. It is uh, one of partners for Progressive Israel's ongoing program dealing with the state of the Israeli left and moves designed to reinvigorate it. So um, we hope you enjoyed it and found it valuable. Uh, for those who missed the opening, I um, will reiterate, um, today's program has been free, but generous contributions would enable the organization to deliver uh, these, such events at no cost. So uh, the website is progressiveisrael.org. If you can make donations, certainly check out upcoming programming. 
Uh, that's it today. Thanks again for joining us and hope to see you next time. Ron, before you leave, I think uh, yeah. I'll you send the links maybe to only the panelists and not the whole chat because people say that they haven't been able to see the emails or the. Will you I see them. To them? Um, I put my email. It's aziza yeah. at univ.haifa.se.il. I think Dinesh took care of it. Yeah, Dinesh has it behind. He's got it all behind the scenes working. He's got the, so let's give people another 15, 30 seconds to copy down the emails. Uh, and uh, and then we'll sign off. Thanks again uh, so much to all the people who joined us today. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, until next thank time. Thank you very much. Thank Bye. you all. Bye, see you. See you. Toda rabba, toda, toda, toda. Shukran. Bye. Bye. Bye.